A Christmas Eve showdown between the Panthers and Lions. Both teams trying to keep their NFC playoff hopes alive. It's yet another Locked On NFL crossover edition here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast and the Locked On Lions podcast. Julian Council, host of Locked On Panthers. He is Matt Derry, the host of Locked On Lions. We'll be breaking down the week 16 matchup between the Carolina Panthers and the Detroit Lions, who both are right in the thick of the playoff picture in the NFC. The Panthers trying to contend for the NFC South Division title, while the Lions are trying to be wild card winners there in the NFC this edition of Locked On Panthers is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is so much fun and it's easy to play. No competing with other players. It's just you versus the projections available. Pick two to five players that they score more or less than their prize picks projection. You went up to 10 times your money on your entry. It can take literally less than 60 seconds to enter. It's that easy. We love Prize Picks and we know that you will too. First time users can receive 100% it's deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. Matt, I don't know how you feel, but I certainly did not think on Christmas Eve the Carolina Panthers would be in the playoff picture. I knew the NFC South was likely not going to be great, but this team that fired Matt Rule at 1-4 and four with five, at, after week five did not see them in a position where if they win their last three games, they could be in the playoffs. And I certainly from this end did not see the Detroit Lions in the playoff picture as a wildcard team. Are you as surprised as me about what we got going on Saturday afternoon between the Panthers and Lions? I really do, Julian. I, I'm I'm a little surprised myself. I, I didn't think this game would have any kind of meaning as we got to Christmas Day, but here we are. Uh, the NFC South is a complete embarrassment. I, I can't even believe that you guys are in this thing. I mean, I watched a lot of your game this Sunday to kind of kind of get ready. I had one eye on it, and it's not a good football team. I, I don't want to. Your the Panther listeners probably going, "Who's this smug guy from Detroit?" The Lions are actually decent. Like this is crazy to me. Um, but the Panthers, I mean, it, it is a very weird kind of setup here. Um, but your guys are right there because Tampa is no good. And, and obviously New Orleans and Atlanta are what they are, but, um, I'd be very interested in seeing how the lions play because they're, they're going to be road favorites first time. And who knows how long, and I know this past week, they were bumped up to like a point, point and a half favorite, but that's only because Mike white was hurt. Right. Um, but. Detroit is is hot, and they're the talk of the league right now. Yeah, it's interesting, too. You talk about the Panthers. They're not a good team. I don't disagree with you. The last two <laughs> weeks prior to the game leading at the Pittsburgh, they had played good football by being able to run the football well, and they have a solid defense. Just overall, they don't have the quarterback play that you would desire, especially if you're going to be a playoff contender. And a lot of people have tried to compare this season back to 2014 when the Panthers were 7-8-1 and eight and, one and won a weak NFC South back then. Now, what's different is this team does not have Cam Newton. This team does not have Luke Keekley. This team does not have Greg Olson or Thomas Davis and a lot of those stalwarts that helped the Panthers get to 15 and 1 in 2015. This roster is young and is still trying to learn how to win. So we'll see how they handle it this week after a week where there was expectations and they fell flat on their face against a bad Pittsburgh Steelers team. But as far as the biggest storylines going to this game, what's the biggest storyline as far as the Alliance perspective headed to Saturday afternoon's game against the Panthers? Like I said, uh, Julian, they're America's team. I mean, everybody's all over them. I mean, the Lions are the talk of the league. They're the toast of the town. People in Detroit are, are talking playoffs and saying they should do it. And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> they were one in six. We wanted to run Dan Campbell out of town, Aaron Glenn, the defensive coordinator, out of town. Uh, I couldn't believe they traded TJ Hawkinson in the division. And all of a sudden, they've won six of seven. And really, the storyline is they're hot playing great complimentary football. Special teams have been good. Defense has been good, much better. And the offenses, even though they only put up 20 against the Jets on Sunday, it's an efficient offense. They run, they throw. Golf hasn't been touched in weeks. The old line's been unbelievable. And so um, people really in Detroit for the first time in a long time are going, road game at Carolina, no problem. Who's next? And still going to be a tough game. Um, you know, like you said, your defense, I mean, I'm a huge Brian Burns fan. I love Jeremy Chin. Uh, that's Jim Nagy. My boy from senior bowl loved him years ago and told me about him, but, uh, 
this is not going to be some walkover or cakewalk, I don't think. But at least the storyline here is is that people are excited. What about down there? Yeah, and that's a good point you bring up about the Panthers' defense. Now, I think the Lions, I watched a lot of that Jets game as well. The Jets have a better defense than the Panthers have. And uh, what they gave up, the punt return, which that's the second time this year the Jets have been have, have given up a punt return for a touchdown. And then later on, they give that complete bust there on that fourth down and one. But other than that, it's not like the Lions' offense was going up and down the field on them. The Panthers certainly need to be up to the task against what's been a really explosive unit. But as far as top storyline here, despite the Panthers losing to Pittsburgh and – being five and nine, they still have a chance to be a playoff team if they win their final three games of the season. This was the same conversation last week. If the Panthers would have won their final four games against Pittsburgh, then against Detroit, then at Tampa and at New Orleans, they would be nine and eight in division champions. Now they can be eight and nine in division champions. So it's really trying to get back to that physicality that they had shown in their wins against Denver and on the road against Seattle. It was the first time they had won back-to-back games since week two and week three of the 2021 season. And the first time they had won on the road since November of 21 when they beat the Arizona Cardinals, who didn't have Kyler Murray that afternoon. That was the game actually Cam Newton made his return to Carolina, had his two touchdowns on his first two touches. So it's really trying to get back to establishing the run. Because when they had done that in their previous wins, I mean, they've averaged 202 yards on the run on the ground rushing in their wins and in their losses it's been it's been far less but they've still had success it was just startling to see the panthers only run for 21 yards on 1.3 yards per carry against a pittsburgh steelers team that had give up 230 yards rushing the week prior to the baltimore ravens that had really nothing to play for other than pride and trying to preserve michael tomlin's streak of never having a losing season uh there in pittsburgh and they've at least helped him do that we'll see how the steelers go the rest of the way but yeah the panthers are trying to find a way to protect the bank as steve wilkes called it they didn't do it last week the bank was also filled with a bunch of steelers fans which yeah. is very common here in charlotte and a, and a lot of places across the league but especially in this town where the fan base has been out on this team and we've seen multiple takeovers over the last few years and matt rule's been the head coach of course now he's gone so they're trying to bounce back find a way to win and be right there in the thick of the playoff picture, which is surprising to say, considering they showed a lot of signs of not really being interested in being a playoff team when they got beat by Pittsburgh on Sunday. But uh, we'll continue the break. Well, go ahead. Uh, Real fast. I just want to say, I I noticed that with a lot of the, the, on the, on the, it was the, uh, the Najee Harris touchdown. My goodness. I mean, the amount of Steeler fans was nuts. I'm assuming there'll be a good chunk of Lion fans down there this Sunday. So. Yeah. Well, how many Lions fans live in the area? Because I don't run into very many Lions fans. No, but they'll travel. Now okay. that this team a little warm, what's the temperature going to be Sunday? <laughs> uh, there's apparently it's gonna be like in the 30s. They're talking about it's gonna be really? like a colder Panther home game, so it's not gonna be warm. Wow, okay. Well, I'd still say there will be some Lion fans that will travel for sure over the holiday. So, now I wouldn't be surprised by that after yeah. seeing a bunch of Vikings fans last year. That was not a franchise I thought would uh take over the stadium here in Charlotte. So, hopefully, those days will change that the Panthers can get back to uh winning some games as they are now set up for their fifth straight losing season. But we'll uh Take a quick pause here, Matt, then come back, talk about some of these key matchups in this Panthers-Lions game. It's yet another Locked On NFL Crossover Thursday brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. For this episode of Locked On Panthers and Locked On Lions is also brought to you by Audible. Audible is releasing a slate of new football podcasts that we're sure you're going to love. That's why you'll be able to find an episode from The League available as a bonus episode on Locked On NFL, narrated by Super Bowl champion and legendary smack talker Richard Sherman and sports broadcaster and rising star Taylor Rooks. The League is an eight-part docuseries about the most bizarre, inspirational, and unlikely stories connected to America's favorite sport pro football. You won't want to miss those these untoward stories spanning from the 1940s to the present. Our bonus episode is called The Way of the Cowboy, and it's an incredible story of the 1977 Dallas Cowboys and how they brought Bruce Lee's protege to teach their their defense martial arts, ushering in a new approach to the way the league is trained. Each story offers equal parts history, entertainment, and social commentary. Head over to the Locked On NFL feed for a bonus episode of The League or catch the full series wherever you get your podcast available right now. Audible, get in the game. All right, back here on Locked On Panthers and Locked On Lions. It's the Locked On NFL Crossover Thursday, sponsored by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com or download the Prize Picks app and enter promo code Locked On. Julian Council, host of Locked On Panthers, Matt Derry. He's the host of Locked On Lions. Seven and seven Lions facing off against the Carolina Panthers, who were sitting at five and nine, but still with a chance to win the NFC South if they went out on Sunday afternoon, Christmas Eve at Bank of, or Saturday afternoon, Christmas Eve at Bank of America Stadium. Matt, let's look at some of these key matchups. Heading to this game, from the Detroit Lions perspective, what are some of the matchups that you're looking forward to seeing from a positive standpoint and also ones that you might be a little bit worried about from a negative standpoint as it pertains to the Lions? 
Well, obviously it looked like, you know, from, from what took place on Sunday that the Steelers had some success running the football. It wasn't a, a great success and it's not a great running team and not a great offensive line in Pittsburgh, but I think the Lions want to get back to, to the ground game and having some success. They have not run the football all that well. Even yesterday, there were some better performances, or I should say Sunday, better performances against the Giant, uh, the Jets, but not the best. And I know the, the, the Panthers' D-line has kind of been the strength of their defense for years, um, so we'll have to see about that. I, I also am interested in watching Brian Burns at 10.5 sacks going up against Panay Sewell and Taylor Decker. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I spent Monday's podcast talking about just how dominant this Lions offensive line has been, led by their tackles. I mean, Frank Ragnall is a Pro Bowl center, but Decker on the left, Sewell on the right. Those guys have been nasty. And I'm always, I've always been, like I said before, a Burns fan. I know he didn't have the, the, a big game Sunday against Pittsburgh, but 10 and a half sacks is still nothing to sneeze about on a bad team. And I'm interested in seeing if Jared Goff finally goes down. It's been weeks since he's been sacked, um, at least consistently. This past week, zero. I believe two weeks before that, zero. So the, the old line's doing a great job protecting. Can the Panthers get in there and force Goff to make a bad throw and an interception? Goff hasn't turned the ball over in weeks. Uh, it's been about 215 snaps a plus. So um, we'll see where this thing goes. Uh, 215 minutes, I should say. We'll see how this thing goes and, and where it goes. But I want to watch Carolina's front against the Lions offensive line uh, this weekend. Yeah, I'm also watching that as well after the Panthers just got manhandled, honestly, by the Steelers offensive line throughout that game, giving up 157 yards rushing. And, and they went into last week better against the run as they were able to even contain Baltimore even in that loss and did a good a great job against the Falcons in that Thursday night football win after really getting gashed by them the week a couple weeks prior in their loss in overtime at Atlanta and they had kind of stopped they've stepped up and played better against the run so it was surprising to see them get pushed around the way that they did on Sunday afternoon like Brian Burns as you mentioned he's been terrific here 10 and a half sacks this year. He's had that knee issue the last couple of weeks. It's kind of slowed him down. He did get a pressure, but Frankie Louvu, who's one of their other linebackers that's been actually tremendous this season, he cleaned it up and got a sack there. But they got to get pressure. And I know Quentin Williams didn't play for the Jets on Sunday, so maybe that had some sort of factor. But the Jets got a good defensive line, and they've gotten after everybody throughout this season. For them not to touch Jared Goff, that does concern me as the Panthers, outside of Burns, really haven't had the best pass rush this season. Like Louvu has six sacks. Most of those have come over the last four weeks. Uh, Marquise Haynes has been a pass rush specialist and kind of like Bryce Huff there with the Jets. He has He's had a couple sacks the last couple weeks after having a bit of fat goose egg in the first about 11 weeks of the season. So they got to get pressure on Jared Goff, who if he sits back there, the guy's got talent. He can make the plays. He might not make all the throws that you want him to make and be as consistent and as, as, as accurate, but he's had a great season so far for the Lions. And I imagine he's been a big part of that team and that offense really stepping forward. And when I look at some of the playmakers on that offense, like Khalif Raymond, who had the punt return on Sunday and that win against the Jets, and he also was pretty good also in the past game, but also Amon, Saint, Amon Ross St. Brown. He's been really good. And the Panthers secondary has been banged up with injuries. J.C. Horn, he's been tremendous. But I imagine he'll be on St. Brown. But Raymond's the one who concerns me because guys like C.J. Henderson, who even when healthy, has struggled. But Keith Taylor, he got diced up all Sunday afternoon trying to defend Deontay Johnson and George Pickens. The other corner that's on Raymond has to really step up because if they don't, that could be a big day for Khalif Raymond. And even... Maybe St. Brown, if he gets in a matchup, that's favorable for him. And that line's offense, the Panthers got to be able to slow down. So I'm certainly looking at the offensive line, the secondary, and the Panthers and Panthers all line's got to step up as well. I want to correct something. Jared Goff's thrown 219 straight passes without an interception, which is the longest of his career, uh, which is interesting. And watch Jamison Williams, too. I, I, you know, I know you're an yeah. SEC guy, Julian. Obviously, he was so dominant at Alabama. Really hasn't been able to get going yet. He's only been playing, only played a couple of games, but Maybe this is the week they get JMO behind the defense and and try to throw a deep ball. Um, you know, it's tough to do uh, in New Jersey in that swirling wind at the Meadowlands. And then the week before was kind of his first game. And but it's been now what three games that that Williams has played. But uh, they got him for one touchdown a couple of weeks ago. But can they kind of get him more involved this week? We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I guess this would probably be the game you would expect. You know, he's got a couple of games under his belt now coming back into the secondary. That again, missing Dante Jackson out for the rest of the season. We'll see what the status is uh, for the Panthers corner. CJ Henderson comes Saturday, but this might be the opportunity for him to really step up and be able to make some plays. Now, as far as the, the Lions defense, I know they struggled early on in the season. 
uh, how, what kind of strides have, have, have they made over the last couple of weeks as they've been able to win six of seven? Starts with, with, with the firing of secondary coach Aubrey Pleasant. And it's, it's really a bad thing to say because you, he's an individual and a person and a good guy and immediately got a job with the Packers. But something, some switch was flipped because ever since he's been let go, the Lions defense has been a whole lot better. Uh, it's been a lot of the basics, you know, blocking and tackling. They're, they're moving people uh, uh, against the run. Uh, they're filling lanes, which at the start of the year, they were getting gashed. D-line has gotten a lot better. Aiden Hutchinson's up for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Watch a kid named Isaiah Bugs in the middle has done well. Romeo Quara is now healthy. Linebacker play is better. Alex Anzalone has stepped up. So, And that's an NFC South guy back in the Saints days. So um, they've just been clicking a little bit better. Not blitzing as much. Aaron Glenn had them very aggressive at the start of the year, almost over-blitzing. And now they're they're cutting back a little bit. And they're just making some plays. And, and they've, they've got players that have, have improved and have played well. I'm interested in seeing you know Hubbard out of the backfield if, if he can get free because that's sometimes where the Lions are a little bit weak is is covering those tight ends or even the running backs out of the backfield in the passing game. Yeah, I would not be surprised if Oquara has a big game. He is from Charlotte with Archer Kell High School, so imagine he'll have a lot of family there and be supporting him on Saturday afternoon. And yeah, as far as, as running backs go, not a lot of great pass catching backs here on this Panthers roster. Hubbard has struggled catching the football at times and really is hanging on to it. And it's really been Deontay Foreman who's been like the bell cow, but he has not been healthy the last couple of weeks with a foot injury, only 31 carries, 84 yards. So not great for him after what we've seen from him. A lot of the Panthers wins against the Falcons early on the season against Tampa as well. And against the Broncos prior to the buy. So the Panthers run game is going to have to step up because I, I feel like the Lions going to want to sell out and force Sam Darnold to beat him, beat them. And Darnold played well on Sunday afternoon, but we saw just not good enough for him to single handedly go out there and beat Pittsburgh and the Panthers offensive line as well that had been playing well, gave up four sacks on the day. A lot of those were just time, the guys getting beat. And we had not really seen that from guys like Bradley Bozeman, that center and the rookie, Aquana, who now in back to back weeks has given up a sack. He's been really solid for the Panthers at left tackle all year long. So we'll see how that pans out later on this Saturday as the Panthers and Lions face off here in Charlotte at Bank of America Stadium. Again, it's a Lockdown NFL crossover Thursday edition of Lockdown Panthers with me, Julian Council, and Matt Derry of Locked On Lions, sponsored by Prize Picks. We'll come back, look at the line, and break down more of this out of the game on Sunday or Saturday, and maybe even give it some predictions of what we think will happen on Saturday afternoon between the Panthers and Lions. But before we do that, Today's episode of Locked On Panthers and Locked On Lions is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to the college bowl season to basketball. They've got you all covered at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts like Locked On Panthers and Locked On Lions, you can even get those as well at BetOnline. They're the fastest and the easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online, where the game starts. Did you know that driving high is considered driving under the influence? That's right. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law in every state, even in the states where marijuana is legal. That means driving high could get you a DUI. And if you think law enforcement officers can't tell when you're driving high, you're wrong. Your friends can tell. Your coworkers can tell. Even your parents can tell. Everyone can tell. So what makes you think that law enforcement officers don't know when you're driving high? Driving on the influence of marijuana can slow your response time and change how you perceive time and speed. So even if you think you're fine to drive when you're high, you're not. Because bottom line is, if you feel different, you drive different. And driving high is driving under the influence. So remember, drive high, get a DUI, paid for by the NHTSA. All right, back here on Locked On Panthers and Locked On Lions. It's the Locked On NFL crossover Thursday sponsored by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com or download the Prize Picks app over the Apple App Store or Google Play Store and enter promo code LOCKED ON. Julian Council, host of Locked On Panthers. Matt Derry, the host of Locked On Lions. Matt, looking at Bet Online, uh, the line opened up on Sunday with the Detroit Lions as favorites at three, as three-point road favorites. And the Panthers, actually probably a good thing for them, as the Panthers have lost nine straight games as the favorites, uh, whether they've been at home or on the road. Were you surprised at all by that line? It's, it sounds <laughs> it sounds right, considering yeah. Detroit just won at New York. Yeah, I mean, the Lions have won six of seven. And like I said, they're hot and playing really well. Uh, there's been so much talk about the NFC South and all, all, all the bad teams and how poorly they've played. And, Got to give Steve Wilkes credit. The guys seem to be playing hard for him, and 
Uh, you know, he's trying to probably push to get the job, um, but there's just not a lot of talent there. And like you said, a quarterback, um, I think the Lions can get to Sam Darnold and rattle him a bit. Um, so that did not, that did not surprise me at all, Julian. I'm, I'm sure you're you're with me on this. I, I'm I'm going to take the Lions to win. I just think they're rolling right now, um, and I think that uh, uh, they're just they're on a mission and playing really really good football. And uh, this is a, an offense certainly with Carolina that uh, you know DJ Moore is pretty good. Uh, you, yep. you can tell me more about that, but I I think that um, I think the Lions will win. I, I like the way they're playing right now. I expect this team to play a lot better on Saturday than they played against Pittsburgh on Sunday, just because they've found a way to bounce back. And really when people are down on them, that's when they play their best. And when the people are high on them, like last week, that's when they play their worst. So I expect this young team to come out firing and ready to go on Saturday afternoon. Now, the unfortunate thing is the Lions have been really good, as we've mentioned here on this podcast and anyone who's been paying attention, because even the lone loss that they had was against Buffalo, where, if they try to actually win the game opposed to playing for the field goal or what, <laughs> playing whatever for the, the tie. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What, whatever Dan Campbell was trying to do there. Uh, Cause they absolutely deserve to lose that game after that. Cause I was sitting there yelling at my TV, just absolutely frustrated by their, yeah. and, uh, their unwillingness to try and win the football game. I mean, I but aside from that, like that's a game Detroit absolutely could have won. And they were more than competitive against Buffalo who right now sits atop of the AFC. So Detroit looks like the, the team that should be favored. And last week when I was talking to my listeners, Looking at the final four games, I was telling them that the Panthers, at worst, can go three and one and be able to be division champions as long as they win their final two games, both against divisional opponents, the most important one at Tampa next week, and then at New Orleans. If you do that, and then you maybe you split with Detroit or Pittsburgh, then you're fine. Now, what I didn't expect to happen, though, was losing to Pittsburgh who by far, when you just look at point differential, was the worst team left on the Panthers' schedule in the final four weeks of the season. The Lions game is the game I thought that they were probably going to lose because Detroit's played well. And after seeing how Detroit won that game on Sunday against the Jets, while it might not have been the most beautiful thing offensively, they got it done defensively as well. And they might have given up 300 yards passing to Zach Wilson, but when they needed to make plays, they made him. Got the interception, which was just another garbage throw from Zach Wilson, but they were able to make the plays <laughs> on special teams. So... Like they're they are a team that is really hot right now, like you mentioned. So for me, it's hard to pick uh, the Panthers to win this game because I mean the Lions they they seem like the team that absolutely should be favored, and I would love I think Carolina can make it a four quarter game as they typically have, but it's hard to be confident about this team after the way they played last week against Pittsburgh, especially knowing it's still a young team, first time really playing meaningful games in December, even at five and nine. Hard to really buy into them, but hey, it's it's funny too because it's like they're playing the Lions, and from our perspective, you're like, okay, yeah, you should beat the Lions, but the Lions are good. <laughs> this this is a different Detroit team, <laughs> and um, they just seem to find a way. And all these games come down to the end. I'm not going to sit here and tell you, oh, I think the Lions are going to blow them out and win 31 to 14. I, I don't see that, um, but I do see kind of a 27 20. Maybe the Lions do make a few mistakes on the road, giving Carolina opportunities. I mean, the Lions are due to turn the ball over. It's just how it, how, it, how it goes in this league. They've been a plus nine their last seven weeks, one of the reasons why they're six and one. Uh, with that being said, though, I just I don't see them losing to Carolina. Um, I just think that they've been so sound. They've been really good. If they get to Darnold, that is a, a sitting target there. Wilson, on occasion this week, got away, including on that fourth and 18 at the end of the game. I don't think Darnold can do that. So, um yeah, I, I would say about 27 20 Lions. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, I don't necessarily have a score. I do think the Lions probably cover. I I, I don't know. Like, nah. I, I don't really see Carolina scoring like 24 points. So they're just not a high octane offense. I could see 21 17, maybe. I, yeah. I, 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 it's a one possession game either way. I, I do see Detroit winning it. And yeah, Darnold, he, he's, he's pretty athletic. But he didn't have much escapability um, in the pocket on Sunday when he sacked four times. Some of it's also him holding on to the football a little bit too long, which has been uh, one of his big bugaboos. And they've, the coaching staff has also asked him, hey, you have an opportunity to run the ball sometimes. Maybe don't try and throw it uh, 30 yards down the field and try and throw the needle. Just go out there and get the first down. So it'll be interesting to see how he plays. But yeah, I, I think the Lions will win this game. But I mean, just big picture, though, because I mean, you talked about it. That was a one in six football team. You guys wanted Dan Campbell out of Detroit. I look at it. I mean, Detroit probably has a really good chance to be ten and seven. If they're ten and seven, they're going to be a playoff team. Just, I mean, what would it mean to for the Lions oh franchise to to be able to win on Saturday, but then to carry forward and win two more games and be a playoff team? 
this city would go ballistic. Julian, this would be amazing. I mean, this never happens here. You know, Monday I was talking about the Colts gag job last week. That used to be what the Lions used to do. The Patriots throwing the ball backwards. Like, what is that's that? what the Lions <laughs> used to do. That was Lions stuff. And now the Lions are the team making plays at the end of the game, watching Jets coach Robert Sala screw up his timeouts. Um, earlier in the year when DJ Moore in your game with Atlanta took his helmet off, that, yeah. you know, and I, I listened to your show that week and I want to hear your reaction. To I mean, that, 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 you know, cost them the game. That's the kind of stuff that used to happen here and it doesn't happen anymore. And so people are just so excited and it's cool. I mean, it really is. I mean, do I think they're going to do it? I don't know. I mean, I think that they'll stub their toe. I think it's going to be tough, but if they somehow pulled this off and made the playoffs in year two of a rebuild when they won three games last year. That's, that's pretty remarkable. Yeah, well, right now we're sitting probably in the worst five-year stretch for the Carolina Panthers. It could be saved if they're able to win the final three, but as I just mentioned, I don't see them winning on Saturday, so that I believe, unlikely to be the case, they could prove me wrong, but it's the hope that kills you, and as soon as you start feeling hope, that's yeah. when the worst things happen. I'm sure, as a Lions fan, you can you have far more history, especially recently, of feeling that. The Panthers did have those years where they went to the playoffs four or five years when they had Cam Newton. Things were great, but you can see very quickly how things can all fall apart. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, for Steve Wilkes, if he can win this game and win a division, I think it's very difficult for David Tepper, the owner here, not to hire him as a full-time head coach. You could even say if he goes, if they're six and six under him and seven and 10 overall, he still deserves a job considering that he's had multiple staffers leave, whether he fired them or they went to go follow Matt Rule at Nebraska. They traded Christian McCaffrey and the run game immediately got better. He was able to establish an identity offensively and defensively, something that Matt Rule couldn't do in his 38 games as the head coach. Special teams wise, they've also been good and he doesn't have a quarterback. You know, Sam Darnold's been fine the last three weeks, but Baker was terrible when he was here. I was happy to see him have success with the Rams on that Thursday night football game and you know, PJ Walker, he had his moments, but he hasn't had a quarterback. He's been short staffed and it's a young football team. So would love to see it happen for Steve Wilkes. That would be the importance, at least for the Panthers winning this game, of course, staying alive and setting a, a monster matchup in week 17 at Tampa Bay. Just don't think they're quite there yet. And they kind of showed us that. No, they didn't kind of, they definitely showed it. Well, right, let's not say that. Let me not talk in absolutes, but they sort they sort of showed us that on Sunday by not being the Pittsburgh Steelers. So should be a fun game either way. I think it's going to be a game that's going to have a lot of, of course, a lot of stakes, but a lot of uh, uh, pressure there. No <laughs> pressure, pressure there potentially late. All right, Julian. Appreciate it, my man. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that's going to wrap up this edition of Locked On Panthers and Locked On Lions. Me, Julian Council, and him, Matt Derry of Locked On Lions, the Locked On NFL Crossover Edition. Sponsored again by our friends over at Price Picks. Go to pricepicks.com or download the Price Picks app and enter promo code Locked On. Check us out over on Locked On Panthers YouTube and Locked On Lions YouTube. Also, check out the Locked On NFL YouTube page as well. And you can check us out wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. In the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole. We'll talk to you all on Friday. and. Can't wait for Saturday's matchup on Christmas Eve. So happy holidays, and we'll talk to you all then.